We just have a few things that we need to um, add to our rules of differentiation. Some of these are things you discovered in your function dictionary, and I just want to summarize them. A lot of these, we can't uh, do very much with them until we learn the chain rule, but we still need to get them down. And the first one is one that you know. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Okay. The derivative of the sine of a function is the cosine of a function. Now what if I go the other way? The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Okay, these are ones that you discovered in your exploration. Now we are also going to learn the derivative of tangent. Later on we'll spend more time with it, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you now. This was not one of the ones on your exploration, but the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. The derivative of tangent is secant squared x. Okay, so there's one, two, three. We've got some more. Now this is one that we did talk about while you were doing your function dictionary. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Very easy. I believe you also did the derivative of the natural log of x. This one is pretty easy. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Okay, And there's some complications with all of these that we don't know how to deal with yet. We're going to be learning this week using a very important skill called the chain rule. But for the time being, I wanted to get these down and um, make sure that we understood the relationship between them. Uh, understanding the graphs of f and f prime. You know, if we think about, for example, the sine function. Okay, here's sine of x. And this was, you know, what you should have discovered when you were doing your exploration, if we think about the possible slopes of the tangent line, the first thing I do is I look at where is it zero? Well, right here and right here it's zero and right here it's zero. So that means if I wanted to graph the derivative, I know straight up from these the derivative graph the graph of my general slope function would have to go through zero at those points. Okay? And I also know that if I look at this segment of the graph right here, every tangent line in that area would be positive, right? From here to here, every tangent line would be positive. And then from, I'll get another color, from here to here, I thought I had another color, sorry. From here to here, every tangent line would be negative, right? So if we consider the graph of the derivative, okay, I've got zeros at these red marks. I know there's positive values and negative values. So what we wind up with is something like this. Okay? Then it becomes negative, stays negative. It comes back up. This stays positive until I get over here. And lo and behold, it's the cosine function. Okay? So it's very important for us to understand those relationships graphically as well. The next one I want to talk about is the absolute value function. This is a good one to talk our way through. If I'm talking about the absolute value function and I want to do 
the derivative of the absolute value function, it has to be done in pieces. Has to be. And the reason it has to be done in pieces is because of the graph. Let's consider the graph for a minute. Let's just look at the granddaddy function, the parent function. If I wanted to consider the slope function to the absolute value of x, let's think of it for a second. When x is negative, what is the slope of the tangent line? Isn't it negative 1, right? So couldn't I, now let's think about this for a second. What is this red line a graph of? Isn't this red line f of x equals negative x, right? And then over here on the positive side of the absolute value function, isn't this just positive x? So we have to actually consider it in two pieces. So on this side, f prime of x is 1. When x is positive, the derivative is 1. And when x is negative, f prime of x is negative 1. So you have to consider it in pieces. The same that what if the absolute value function was moved? Like um, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Well, let's kind of think our way through the graph here. This one is shifted to the right three units. Okay. And what are the two pieces of this graph now? Well, this side over here is not just x. Let's think of what it's doing. Isn't its slope just 1? Down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. It go, it, if I were to extend it, wouldn't it go through negative 3? Yeah. So over here, it's x minus 3. What is it on the left? It is, now be careful, what is the slope? Isn't it negative x plus 3? Right? So if I wanted to do the derivative of this absolute value function, it's still going to be 1, but when is it 1? This is for x greater than 3. Okay? And on the left side, this derivative is negative 1 for all of the x's less than 3. And that's how you have to treat the derivatives of an absolute value function. Okay? You have to consider the pieces. All right? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you would write it that way, yes. Um, now, what if I wanted to do the derivative of just the plain old square root of x? Well, if it's just the square root of x, is this number 8? Um, if this is just the square root of x, if the thing underneath it is just x, and that's important, because later on this week we're going to look at when it's like the square root of whatever, x cubed 5x squared or something. Well, isn't this the same thing as x to the 1 half? Right? 
And then can't you use the power rule? So that would be, using the power rule, bring the one half around front, one half x to the, and then I have to subtract one from that, negative one half power. So there you have to use the power rule. Could I use the power rule with um, the derivative of the cube root of x? I sure could, same way, okay? I'm not going to go through that one. Now, one more thing that I don't think that we've really spent enough time on, okay, is what if you are asked to find an equation of the tangent line to a function at a specific point. Like let's say the point was 1, 2. Let's say the function was, I don't know, something ugly like this. Okay, find an equation of the tangent line to that function at this specific point. Well, couple things. As soon as you see tangent line, aren't you thinking derivative? Right? So you're going to have to find the derivative. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this function with fraction exponents. It would be 6x to the 2 thirds minus 4x to the negative 1 half after I write it with fraction exponents. And then when I do the derivative using the power rule, I would have 6 over 1 times 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third minus, it's actually going to become a plus because I'm going to have a negative 1 half this is going to become a plus. 4 over 1 times 1 half x to the negative 3 halves. Yes, that is a negative 1 third right there. Okay. Simplifying my fractions, I have 4x to the negative 1 third plus 2x to the negative 3 halves. That is my derivative. That's the general slope function. Won't it tell me the slope anywhere? And aren't I considering a specific point? So guess what? We're going to plug in the 1. We're going to plug in the 1. All right? And when you plug in the 1, I'm going to save you the algebra right now because we're running out of time. F prime of 1 turns out to be 6. What is that? That is the slope of my tangent line at 1. And then from there, we can use the point slope form. From there, I would go to y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. My slope would be 6. My point would be 1, 2. Okay? So once, it's mostly just find the derivative, plug in the x value, and go from there. And we are going to stop there for today.